Hello and welcome to another Haas tip of the day. Now, as machinists, it's our job to turn raw stock into finished parts that match a blueprint. Now, just as important as our NC program is our part setup. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to give you some tips on how to find the edge of your part quickly and more importantly, accurately and with confidence. Okay, so when I want to find the edge of a part, I usually just probe it. But we've got around 200,000 machines out in the field, and not everyone has a probe yet. So right now, in today's tip, we're going to just cover the manual methods of finding an edge. Things like using an edge finder or different styles of indicators. Now, even if you do have a probe, these are skill sets that every CNC machinist really needs. So let's go ahead and start with the edge finder. I'm going to put this tool in the spindle and jog that edge finder just below my surface. And now from the control, I'm gonna enter 750 forward. Now 750 RPMs is the maximum allowable RPMs with the door open. Now it's also a great RPM to run our edge finder at. If your doors were closed, you could run the spindle as fast as you'd like, okay? Now, I could have started my spindle by commanding an M3 S750 from MDI, but I could have just hit the forward button. If I hit the forward clockwise button without typing in 750 first, it's going to start up that spindle at whatever RPM it was last running at. So if your tool had just been running at 10,000 RPMs, and you load up an edge finder with the doors closed and press the forward clockwise button, it's going to spin that edge finder at 10,000 RPMs and it's going to rip it in half. So we've got an edge finder here that's actually been uh, pulled, uh, pulled apart uh, by running about 7,500 RPMs. And we found the pieces. We did not, however, find the center spring. Let's get back to our real part. So my tool is spinning at 750 RPMs right next to the edge that I'd like to pick up. And I'm going to flick the edge of the edge finder there and get it wobbling pretty good. Now I'm going to come to my control and change to a 0 .001 jog increment. And I'm going to jog up against that edge. I'm going to keep jogging until the tip of the edge finder makes contact and straightens itself out, aligning with the body of the edge finder. Now I'm going to move in on 0 .001 increments, one click at a time, until that edge finder kicks off. Now, this is personal preference. For me, after it's kicked off to one side, I actually back it off by one click if I'm on a one thou increment. Now, at this point, we found the edge. We're going to go to the offset page, and we're going to go to our G54 work offset and press part zero set under the X axis. Now, let's repeat this process for the Y axis. I flick the indicator again. I jog up against the Y axis until it looks pretty straight aligned. And I keep going one click at a time until it kicks over. I back it off by one click. And I go to my Y axis work offset column and press part zero set. OK, now we're going to switch to some pointy tool like a chamfer tool or a drill and check our work offset. I'm going to jog down while staying well above our part and enter some code under MDI. Now, you might want to write this down. I'm going to enter G54. G0, G90, X0, Y0. What this is going to do is it's going to move using work offset G54, which is the offset that we just set, X and Y. G00 means go really fast. G90 says make all of our X, Y moves in relationship to that G54. And then X0, Y0 means just go right to X0, Y0. Okay, I'm well above the part. I'm going to press cycle start. From here, I'm going to jog down just above the part and see how things look. Okay, so our pointy tool looks like it's off a certain amount from our edge. It's not where it should be. This is how an edge finder works, okay? What we've done here is we found the edge of our edge finder instead of the center of our edge finder. And we're going to have to compensate. Now in our case, the tip of our edge finder is 0.2 inches diameter. So once we've set all of our work offsets, we have to go back in and adjust things. We're going to have to shift our, our x-axis, G54, to the right by 0.1 inch to compensate for the radius of our edge finder. We're also going to have to, to shift our y-axis, G54, by that same 0.1 inch. Now I'm going to hand jog 0.1 inches to the right 
and 0.1 inches in the Y, and I'm gonna set our G54, X, and Y again. It'll shift it by 100 thou each direction. Now we could have just gone to the offset page and entered plus 0.1 and minus 0.1, but until you've gotten used to this, it's a little safer just to command it to go to X0, Y0, jog the 100 thou and the 100 thou. Okay, so I've changed my part out here to a finished part with some milled surfaces on it. Now, the edge finder is only good within about a thousandth of an inch. If my part has to be absolutely correct the first time and I don't have a probe, then I'm gonna go to my indicator. I'm gonna jog down and I'm gonna indicate that left edge of the part from both the left side and from the right side. We're gonna take those two values and average them, right? We're gonna add them together and then divide by two. So, indicating the left side of my part, pretty straightforward. I just bring down my indicator and sweep it. But how do I get to the right edge of that part? It's not possible. So, we can grab a one, two, three block, set it up against the side of our part, and sweep that for the right side. But here's the trick. Find a nice flat ground insert, like the one I've got here. This one is really easy to hold up against the side of our part. I'm gonna go ahead and jog that indicator over until it makes contact with my insert. I'm then gonna sweep the insert until I can find the high spot. Once I find that high spot, I'm gonna switch to a one-tenth increment, and I'm gonna jog in until my indicator reads zero. Once there, I'm gonna sweep it again, making sure I'm still on that high spot. I have now found that edge while coming at it from the right side of my part. Without touching the indicator at all, I'm gonna come up to my x-axis to an offset I'm not using and press part zero set to record that number for later. Now I'm gonna rotate my indicator around 180 degrees, being really careful not to bump that indicator. I'm gonna jog over and down. I'm gonna jog in. Once I'm close, I switch to one-tenth of a thou increment. I'm gonna sweep my part until I find the high spot and then hand jog in until my indicator reads zero. I'm gonna double check it again by rotating it, making sure I'm still on the high spot. That's my edge from the left side. So I now have two values on my offset page. I'm gonna add those two values together and divide by two. That new value is the machine coordinate position directly above the edge of my part, my G54X value. I'm gonna go ahead and sweep the, the Y axis edge now. Okay, now we've set our work offset, right, X and Y, but just like before, we need to check to make sure we didn't goof something up. We're gonna switch to some pointy tool, like a chamfer tool or a drill. I'm gonna command G54, G0, G90, X0, Y0. I'm gonna press cycle start. I'm gonna jog down and see how things look. That looks really good. Okay, so at least visually, right, we know we're in the right spot. Okay, this brings us to the final tool we're gonna to show you today our Heimer 3D sensor. This indicator works in all directions, X, Y, and Z, and we're gonna use it instead of an edge finder today. We're gonna go ahead and jog down next to our part just like we would with an edge finder, except with this indicator, we don't start the spindle, we simply jog up against the edge of our part. Now, as I move sideways, you'll see that my indicator starts to move, both the small and the large needle. Keep going until both needles land on the zero. I'm switching to point zero, 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 one, a little finer adjustment, and that's it. So right now, you can see that the indicator tip is actually bent sideways, because what's happened is this indicator was already calibrated to put the center line of our spindle right above our edge of our part when both those large and small dials read zero. It's compensating for the, for the ball at the end of that stylus. So with this indicator at zero, zero, all I have to do is go to my offset page and press part zero set. We're done, that was it. Just jog up against the edge of a part, press part zero set. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move it back here and set my Y. So we've shown you how to use an edge finder. We've shown you how to uh, really accurately pick up an edge with an indicator. And we've showed you how simple it is to use a 3D sensor. Well, remember, no matter how you set your work offset, be sure to, to, to load up a pointy tool in the spindle, right? The chamfer tool or drill, command it to go to your G54X0Y0 or whatever work offset you're using, just to verify that the things are where you think they should be. Well, 
Thanks again for uh, letting us be a part of your success and for watching this Haas Tip of the Day. Thank you.